In those months, Milan was ravaged by the plague, carried into the region by the Landsknechts. All the measures taken to contain the epidemics had been ineffective. The Cardinal Federico Borromeo had organized a great procession, which, on June 11th, wound through the streets of Milan, carrying the relics of San Carlo to each of the city gates and stopping in front of the crosses that, during the plague of 1576, had been erected in many crossroads of the city. This procession only helped to spread the infection. The number of deaths increased to 200 per day, Empty houses were prey to looters, and many sick people were being left without care. Carts continually carried sick and moribund people to the Lazaret of what is now Porta Venezia, where many wooden shacks had been built in a hurry, and to the Gentilino, where another Lazaret had been arranged. The citizens of Milan were exhausted and many of them had fallen prey of paranoid beliefs. It also seems that some people had started to smear the walls and doors of houses with sticky and foul-smelling substances in order to increase the panic and loot easily. On that week, the inhabitants of the district of Porta Ticinese had seen that a few houses seemed to have been smeared. Greece. A woman remembered having seen a man with a suspicious behavior. She remembered that one of her acquaintances had greeted this man. This allowed the captain of justice to identify Guglielmo Piazza and to arrest him. Piazza tried to exonerate himself, but was not believed. After being submitted to reiterated torture sessions, he eventually confessed to be a plague spreader. He said that a sticky ointment had been given to him by a barber, who, in exchange for money, had proposed him to smear the houses in the area. A barber named Gian Giacomo Mora was immediately arrested. His shop was at the corner between the Vetra dei Cittadini and the Corso di Porta Ticinese. To his misfortune, he had made a preparation against the plague without the necessary authorization. In his shop, he kept small jars with various substances. In his courtyard, there was a large pot with a suspicious substance of yellowish color, the product of some unspecified concoction. After more than a month of tortures, also the barber confessed. He had prepared a pestiferous ointment using the saliva of the dead provided by Piazza, and that for the money promised by Gaetano de Padilla, son of the commander of the garrison of the Milan castle, who was eventually acquitted later on. At the end of July, the Milan Senate sentenced the two defendants to a gruesome execution to be carried out on August 1st. The two self-confessed plague spreaders tied back to back were taken in an obstrewn cart to the place of the execution. The cart, followed by a bloodthirsty crowd, departed from the palace of the Captain of Justice, now the headquarters of the municipal police, passed by the Duomo, and then followed the street of the goldsmith, that of the plume manufacturers, that of the she-wolf, that of the ball, that of San Giorgio a Palazzo, until it reached the Carobbio. Then the cart took the street of San Bernardino alle Monache, 
the convicts were torn with red hot pincers on the way until, following via San Pietro in Caminadella, the cart arrived at the Porta dei Fabri, the Smith's Gate. From there, the cart moved along the Vetra dei Cittadini and arrived in front of Mora's shop, where the two convicts had their right hand cut off. Eventually, the cart arrived in Piazza Vetra and stopped near the scaffold. Today, the square has become part of a urban park that includes the basilicas of San Lorenzo and San Eustorgio. The houses that surrounded it were destroyed by the bombs of World War II and by urban planning decisions. Proprio qui si trovava il patibolo. In Roman times, this was a marshy area where the Vepra flowed, a stream that came close to the city walls. Those who built the Basilica of San Lorenzo had to lay deep foundations for it by using the stones of the ancient amphitheater nearby. In this ancient drawing by an anonymous artist dating after the collapse of the Dome of San Lorenzo in 1573, one can see the drop between the floor of the church and the ground outside. The Vepra, later called Vetra, continued to flow in the open until 1828. In the meantime, many small tanneries had opened up along its course, one next to the other. They used the stream's water in their production processes. When the Vetra was eventually covered, several buildings gradually rose about the square, and also leaning against the basilica. In 1728, a statue of San Lazzaro was erected. In 1862, an iron market hall was built according to the design of architect Terzaghi. The scaffold, which had been erected on the square during the Spanish occupation, had been removed in 1814 and placed on a meadow between Porta Ludovica and Porta Vicentina. The two wretches got off the cart into the howling mob. They climbed on the scaffold where their bones were broken with a wheel. Their fractured limbs were twisted into the wheel on which they were lifted from the ground and left in agony for six hours before having their throats cut. Their corpses were burnt and their ashes thrown into the vetra the stream flowing in the scaffold. The Senate of Milan also ordered that the House of Mora was demolished and that in its place a granite column with a stone sphere on the top was erected, the Column of Infamy. On the wall of the house beside it, a large plaque was placed, reminding of the crimes committed and of the punishment imposed. Already in November of that year, the plague epidemic began to lose vigor, and in the following year it disappeared almost completely, after causing some 90,000 deaths. The column of infamy remained in its place until 1778. Then, at the time of the Austrian domination, thanks to the pressure of intellectuals as Pietro Verri and Cesare Beccaria, who had denounced with their works the injustice of confessions obtained under torture, the governor, Carlo Giuseppe di Firmian, decided to tear it down. 
Yes, the Senate of the city opposed the demolition as an admission of a justice miscarriage. The Austrian government, with the pretext of the bad condition of the pedestal, sent some workers who demolished the column during the night, stating that it was dangerous. The plaque was removed in 1803 and can be seen today in the Milan castle, under the portico della Rocchetta. A new house was built where the column had stood and, in 1863, Via Vetra dei Cittadini was renamed via Gian Giacomo Mora. Today, at the place of that house, destroyed by the bombs of 1943, is a new building. Under the corner porch of it, a plaque and a sculpture remind us of the tragic events. In his history of the column of infamy, Alessandro Manzoni wrote, it's a relief to think that if they didn't know what they were doing, this was only because they did not want to know it. It was only for that kind of ignorance, which one takes or loses as it deems fit, and which is not an excuse, but a fault.